Addison's is not a very common disease in dogs, but it can make them terribly, terribly, terribly sick. But if you can recognize Addison's, you can take a dog who literally entered the clinic on a gurney, dying, and that dog can go home in two or three days and then go on to live a perfectly normal lifespan. For me, it's one of the great joys of veterinary medicine when we have a patient where without our intervention, they were going to die. We spot it, we treat it, and they go about their, their merry way. So it makes it a very, very exciting disease to work with. Classic Addison's disease, which is the one that is most urgent and emergent, is a total shutdown of the adrenal glands. And there are two little glands that sit next to the kidneys and they make really important hormones that keep us well. So the two hormones that they make that we rely on day to day to day to day are cortisol and aldosterone. And if you don't make enough of those hormones, you basically crash and burn. We sometimes see dogs where they're just missing the cortisol and those dogs aren't as dramatically sick. The classic Addisonian, both hormones are gone and they get very, very compromised. It's called the Great Pretender because these dogs come in at first glance, you tend to think they've got something else. And so dogs with classic Addison's, they look first glance, history, physical exam, and lab data, first glance, they look as though they've got severe kidney failure. The atypical Addison's, they usually come in looking as though they've got some kind of chronic gastroenteritis. So they're not eating well, some vomiting, some soft stool. Once we figure it's Addison's, that conversation completely changes. But first glance at the lab work, it's very, very easy for a vet to say, oh, it's the kidneys, and kind of head in the wrong direction. I think there's times when you've got to have that little voice at the back of your head that, that just makes you think about Addison's. Because if I put my Addison's spectacles on and I look at the lab work and the patient and the history and everything I have with that, could it be Addison's question? That's when sometimes the jigsaw piece is just the shape, the pattern that emerges from the jigsaw is just slightly different. And so I'll, I'm going to go after Addison's. So for me, it's looking really closely at the blood count. And so usually when dogs are, are sick for whatever reason, they'll get this very predictable change in their white cell count that we call a stress leukogram. And so it doesn't matter why you're coming into the doctor's office ill, we expect to see this stress response on your blood count. And dogs with Addison's don't do that because they can't make the stress hormone that drives that change. And so what we have is a very normal, complete blood count in a dog who is very, very sick. And one of the cells that we look particularly closely at on the blood count is this blood cell called an eosinophil. And often dogs with Addison's, they have more than 500 eosinophils. And that for me is often the, the tipping point. I'll look at their blood count and say, more than 500 eosinophils? I wonder if you could have Addison's and that will send me in that direction. I screen a lot of patients with some very inexpensive tests. Um, so we can just do a very simple test called a baseline cortisol. And if that number is more than two micrograms per deciliter, then Addison's is off the table. But I think for me, it's that just taking that second before you say bad kidneys, GI tract disease, just taking that second to just think about it, ask the question, ask the question, ask the question probably is the best message actually.